I couldn't say no to the Rainforest Alliance anyway. I love this organization. I love what you do. I love this track record of accomplishment over the last two decades, over this most critical point in history. This organization has done what many aspire to do, and that is to really make a difference. Now, this organization has the theme of trying to strike the balance of working with people and with nature, the natural systems that support us all. I'm asked sometimes why we should care about the waters of the world, other than the fact that we drink water, that we bathe in water, and that we absolutely have to have water for our survival. But then the question goes, well, why the ocean? Why, why do we need the ocean? It's the blue engine to combine with the green engine that you celebrate with the Rainforest Alliance that really shapes the character of the world. A little carbon dioxide is absolutely necessary. Too much is a big problem. In the ocean, the big problem that is now arising is acidification. And if you haven't heard about that one, stay tuned because it's headlines now in the scientific literature arising into, well, the New Yorker had an article about it just a few weeks ago. Uh, and it will soon be right up there with sea level rise as an issue. Why? Well, bad news for coral reefs. They're calcium carbonate structures that will dissolve if the acid level gets too poor. Bad news for clams. They have a calcium carbonate shell. Bad news for those of you who like to eat clams. <laughs> bad news for a lot of things that we tend to take for granted. Rainforests of the sea, coral reefs are sometimes called, for good reasons. There's some great parallels. They're both very wet. They're both very diverse. They're both greatly imperiled at this point in time. Going back 50 years, I guess you could say rainforests were even more imperiled than coral reefs. Because 50 years ago, we hadn't quite gotten there yet into the ocean to do some of the dastardly things that we found ways and means of doing to the land. Not really appreciating the value of the wild systems to us, to our economy, to our health, to our security, to our very survival. In 50 years, half of the coral reefs of the world have either been lost outright, gone, or they're in a terrible, dis distressing state of decline. The good news is, like the good news you can say about forests. They're not all gone yet. There's still a chance. What's less evident to most people is how the ocean connects back to the land. How is the ocean connected to the rainforest? How is the rainforest connected to the sea? In every way you can imagine. Again, think about the oxygen that is generated the carbon that's grabbed, how it's all part of one system. What, what possible relevance is your right hand to your left foot? What difference does your heart make to the system as a whole? What can you, how, when you think about the natural systems that support us, there isn't anything that we can just discard and say, it's, we can do without deserts. We can do, we can lose coral reefs, so what if they're gone? What if we lose rainforests, every scrap of them? What difference would that make? You've got a diminished health for this little blue place that we call home. We truly need business as unusual. And it's happening. That's the good news. And, you know, this organization is in a leadership role for business as unusual. Making that transition, making it profitable to be striking the balance with the natural systems, doing the right thing, and making it profitable. What a concept. Everybody wins especially us in the end, especially the places that have been developing over all preceding history that we've been destroying in our lifetime. And we can't really go back and put them back the way they were. We can make them better than they are, those places that are already damaged. 